starting out restocking some modules, if it's correct info, yes. The tracking number said module, so I think it's a nano. And USB-C, of course, as we migrate into modern times. I have a couple of boards I made over the past couple of years that have dedicated nanos, so I was starting to run out and I need more. For example, this AY38910 sound generator. It has a nano that I dedicated on here, so I'm trying to get USB-C where I can, and any project that has a dedicated module, I just throw the older style connectors on there because it's set and forget, and anything I'm working on currently, I don't have to maintain a whole bunch of different kind of USB cables. I think I know what this is because I've only ordered a couple of things recently that came in. Yep, there should be three different things here. There's a 50k pot. They call this an Alpha 09 style, so this would mount on a PCB and this is upwards, it's not a right angle style. So I have three of those 50k pots. Then I have two different, it says RS17, rotary switches. This one has eight positions, so you have all of these terminals, and this mounts on a PCB and the knob would be straight up. And this one has six positions, mounts the same way. But the reason I wanted rotary switches and a 50k pot like this, these rotary switches won't directly fit, so I have to look at that as well, but I have a couple of Boss guitar effect pedals where they have 50k pots, but then to choose between selections, they have rotary switches. They're actually not switches. They are potentiometers, but they have detents to stop at fixed positions and give a certain resistance out. And we can't really see in there, I can't take it apart, but the potentiometer in there with the fixed detent positions is a similar size to these. So this is way bigger and it does not fit in there, but I'm wondering maybe I can do a custom board or something because the pot with the fixed positions is out of production. So how do we repair this? Because mine, it doesn't work. It's like having a dirty switch contact. So I can change it to some of the fixed positions and the mode on the unit does not change or it's not reliable. And it's sealed so you can't spray a cleaner in there. It's kind of dead. So I was thinking maybe I can get a rotary switch and have fixed resistors mimicking a pot with fixed areas that it will stop so I can get the functionality back. But I have to do testing, see if I can make all this physically fit in the enclosure. General parts stocking. This looks like a voltage regulator, SOT23, XC6206P332. So that's going to be a 3.3 volt regulator. And I think these can do maybe 200 milliamps. I'm not sure how many these are, 50 or 100, but I've got a PCB coming up that needs 3.3 volts, not much current, so I thought I might as well get a tiny package that can fit on the board. This is one of those choice delivery multi-shipment packages. Oh, old style flashlight bulbs. I think I ordered some various things, uh, incandescent as well as LED. This package was in there. Oh, well this kind of fell out of the packaging here. So two different three volt packages. I wonder if one of them is a different color temperature. I'll just take one of each. These incandescent ones say 2.5 volt. I also got these bulb sockets. I have some 
old flashlights that do use this style of bulb, but I may want to try replacing them with LED if that works just as well. I never really did like incandescent in a flashlight, and I thought if I get some of these bulb sockets, maybe I can actually use them in some sort of project. These sockets, the bulb goes in so far and then it's freely spinning, so I don't know if it made contact and bottomed out, but I'm going to get some voltage here. First 2.5 volts on the incandescent. That works. And I'll put it up to 3 volts since the LED said it wanted it. I assume this is going to be polarized. Yeah, it works. So let me just see. That's kind of bright white. Oh no, that's bright white. So that's probably what I would put in a flashlight. So that's why I bought two sets. They are slightly different color temperatures. This one's warmer. It's hard to show this kind of thing on camera. But these are nostalgic things, so maybe a transistor driver to use some of these as an indicator in a project. Then there's this one. It's kind of heavy. This is something I ordered long ago. Ah, 8 ohms, 20 watts. I think this is a double-sided sticky mounting thing. This is a surface transducer. You put this plate in contact with a hard surface and it uses the surface as a speaker cone type effect. So you can use objects to transmit sound. And I'm going to test this out with an MP3. I looked up this artist and song in the YouTube library to make sure it's still in there as copyright free music because YouTube has been known to suddenly not have certain things in there and suddenly you can get a copyright strike, which I don't understand how that works. If we can't trust it, how can we use it? So this was added there in 2018. It's still there, so I'm going to do it for now. I'm running the output into an orange amplifier to get the signal boosted, and now I'm going to this audio jack, and I'll get alligator clips to hook up to this. So everything is insulated, should not short out. So I can sort of hear it now with music playing. If I put it on the table, It's actually got some bass to it. Of course, we can't demo that on camera. So now I'll put it on a more solid surface. Not as much bass, but it might be louder. So I'm not sure all of the uses for something like this, what it's originally intended for, but one of the ideas I had for this was maybe to do some sort of experimental reverb effect. Like if I want to create a plate reverb or something, if I attach this to a big piece of metal so it's going to play sound into it and it's going to vibrate that surface, maybe then I can use another transducer as a pickup on the other side and get a reverberation effect and use that mixed in with the original audio and see if I can get some sort of interesting effects out of that. Otherwise, it's just an interesting thing to experiment with in general. So I thought I'd make the purchase. So we have some more parts restocking as always, some nostalgic things to try to make a project out of, some repair attempts with these rotary switches, and possible prototyping of some ideas with this surface transducer.
As always, thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make this possible.